Magavanen, folks. It is I, once again, your host for the evening, Count Dracula. Yes, the Lord of the Rings is quite popular amongst us vampires. We are interested in solving the second order nonlinear differential equation, that is, y double prime equal to pi over alpha times y prime squared times the cotangent of pi y over alpha. Now, you must be thinking, why is there specifically a pi over alpha term? Well, you can ignore it and you can still solve the differential equation. I'll just have to carry forward with me an annoying constant term, so the choice is, pure, is purely convenience. Also, the alpha parameter, it's a real number, the restraints on it or the constraints on the alpha parameter would of course be determined by the domain of the x and y variables as well, specifically the, the domain of the x variable and hence the, the domain of the, the domain of the y variable given that we have a cotangent term in there, which could be nasty. But anyway, let's ignore all of that and just solve the equation for the fun of it. So the first thing we notice here is that the x term is missing explicitly. So we might as well invoke the substitution that is letting y prime equal to u. And this, of course, implies that y double prime is equal to du over dx, which on its surface doesn't really seem like much of a big deal. But if you take note, this transforms your differential equation into an equation in three variables, x, y, and u, which is, uh, it's kind of nasty if you ask me. So we'll write this as du over dy times dy over dx via the chain rule. And dy over dx is, of course, u. So we have u times du over dy. And that is our y double prime. And this is our y prime term. And that considerably simplifies our differential equation. We now have u times du over dy equal to pi over alpha times u squared, terribly sorry about that, times the cotangent of pi y over alpha. Now, if we expand using 1 over u squared, which should not be much of a big deal, of course, that means we assume u here is non-zero, but that implies that y prime is non-zero. And y prime equal to equaling zero just means the y is a constant, so we're not exactly missing out on any interesting solutions anyway. So, again, trivial solution, 0 equal to 0. The point is, we can cancel out the u terms, and hence we have 1 over u du over dy equal to pi over alpha times the cotangent of pi y over alpha, which is a nice separable differential equation. So we'll write this as 1 over u du equal to pi over alpha times the cotangent of pi y over alpha dy, and we'll integrate. So on the left we have the logarithm of u, and on the right we have the integral of pi over alpha cosine of pi y over alpha over the sine of pi y over alpha. And again, the constant term up front is a matter of convenience. Because now we have sine and it's derivative up top, so that means we should we should get log of sine on integrating. So the result is log of sine of pi y over alpha. I'm just ignoring the absolute value signs. I mean, what are we going to do with them anyway? Just add absolute value signs. You have a plus and minus sign. You carry it forward, yada, yada, yada. Really all, not all that interesting. So we have log of... Uh, don't... Uh, do that for your exams or your research work. That might that might end up being interesting, but for all the wrong reasons, if you know what I mean. Anyway, so this is the log of the sine function plus a constant of integration, which I shall write as log of a, a being greater than zero, of course. So that means I have log of a times the sine of y pi over alpha because of, well, log properties. And of course, this implies that u itself is equal to a times the sine of pi y over alpha because the logarithm is, of course, injective. Okay, cool. That looks quite nice because I now have u in terms of y, but my differential equation actually required y in terms of x, so we still have some work to do. u here is, of course, dy over dx. So that means we have a times the sine of pi y over alpha. And this implies that uh, another separable differential equation, so I could expand by 1 over sine. In other words, we have the cosecant of y pi over alpha 
dy equal to a times, I'll integrate a times the integral of dx. So on the right, we just have this linear function ax plus b, which looks dope. And on the left, we have this interesting looking trigonometric integral, which is just a cosecant function. So cosecant sorts out to log of cosecant minus cotangent. So that's cosecant of pi y over alpha minus cotangent of pi y over alpha. And we need to we need to divide by the derivative of the argument, which is of course pi over alpha. Okay, cool. And you might be thinking, why is he even introducing the absolute values now? Well, I think it just looks cooler anyway. But if I'm gonna be non-rigorous, I might as well be rigorously non-rigorous and just write this as parentheses. But there's something about the antiderivative here that's just making it making me uncomfortable. I mean, we have a cosecant minus a cotangent, which should not bother me that much, but I just think it looks cooler. Anyway, uh, judge me for this later in the comment section. The thing is, we have log of the cosecant of pi y over alpha minus the cotangent of pi y over alpha equal to alpha over, is it, what is it? Oh yeah, it's pi over alpha. Terribly sorry about that. I often forget basic arithmetic. Now, pi over alpha is just another constant, so I'm going to absorb pi over alpha into A, and I'm also going to absorb pi over alpha into B, so that the right-hand side is still AX plus B in all its glory. And on the left-hand side, it could simplify this a lot more. I mean, we have cosecant and cotangent, remember? So that's 1 over sine, so that is the sine of pi Y over alpha, 1 over it minus the cosine of pi y over alpha over the sine of pi y over alpha, which looks dope. And we have the logarithm of one minus cosine of pi y over alpha over the sine of pi y over alpha as a common denominator. And on the right, we have this linear function again in all, its in all of its glory. So what we can do now is recall that the right-hand side could be expanded as the log of e to the ax plus b. So this implies that 1 minus cosine of pi y over alpha over the sine of pi y over alpha should be equal to plus or minus e to the ax plus b. There, you happy now? It's a, I'm, carrying, I'm carrying forward a plus or minus sign. So up top, we have 1 minus cosine. 1 minus cosine is proudly equal to 2 sine squared of half the angle. So we have pi y over 2 alpha. In the denominator, I can expand this via, again, the double angle formula, as 2 sine pi y over 2 alpha times the cosine of pi y over 2 alpha. And on the right, I still have plus or minus e to the ax plus b. And that, of course, means I can cancel out the twos here and there. So there goes a sine term. We have sine over cosine, which is tangent. So we have tangent of pi y over alpha equal to plus or minus e to the ax plus b. And the good news is that, well, normally I leave it at an implicit relation between y and x. But this time we can solve it explicitly. This implies that y over alpha, now y itself should equal... I feel like I'm missing a factor, a factor of two somewhere. Oh yeah, this is it. It was two alpha, of course. So we have y equal to two alpha over pi times the arctangent of this exponential function, arctangent of plus or minus e to the ax plus b, which I think looks absolutely gorgeous. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. I hope you learned something from the video. And remember to not skip your absolute value signs unless the domain actually allows for it, which of course I assumed. And that is left as an exercise to you, the reader, I mean the viewer. Thank you. See you next time.